one. Today is day 29 and we're going to go into establishing why we're here. You can notice we're in a different location. And the beauty about this location is this place is called Southern on Sea and there's so much wonderful landmark here. Um, we've deliberately chosen this location to reflect this chapter that we are going to be working on today. We need to appreciate nature from time to time and this area that we're in right now is one of those really, really tranquil, beautiful nature nature made, nature reserved, working with man to achieve this. But anyway, we're going to go into it. So, chapter 29, day 29, what are we looking at? We're still reading our book, The Purpose Driven Life, by Rick Warren. And the question is, what on earth am I here for? So here it starts, it says, purpose four. You were shaped for serving God. That's the purpose. Remember we had other purposes, and the first one was, we are planned for God's pleasure. Number two is, we are formed for God's family. Number three, we were created to become like Christ. And number four, we were shaped for serving God. So we're going to go straight into it. The title is Accepting Your Assignment. That's what it is. So you know usually he gives us two verses to reflect on before we really delve into what the chapter is all about. Um, occasionally you hear lots of noise going on in the background and people are generally having fun because it's an exciting bright day. Uh, being, being a seaside town, people are just by the seaside, which is where we are right now, and just walking around and just relaxing and having fun. It's a beautiful Sunday after church. So, um, we will try and give you some little glimpses of what's happening in the background, just for you to appreciate how amazing this place is. Okay, so accepting your assignment is today's title. So, the two verses... Um, it is God himself who has made us what we are and given us new lives from Christ Jesus. It is God himself who has made us what we are and given us new lives from Christ Jesus. And long ages ago, he planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. So that's from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Long ago, he planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. That's a big thing we have to note there, helping others. The second one is, I glorified you on earth by completing down to the last detail what you assigned me to do. I glorified you on earth by completing down to the last detail what you assigned me to do. So this is where God is now giving us assignments to do, things to do, things we have to start taking on. And that's John chapter 17, verse 4. Okay, so we're going into it now. Okay, so you see me alternating locations because again, we're working with the sun here. And when we have quite a bit of sun, we give way so that it's not too blown out. So it is God himself, we finish it up. So he says, we are put on earth to make a contribution. Now that's a huge statement. I really, really love that. We were put on earth to make a contribution. And this is one area where lots of us do not get the message. We just think our role is to come here, enjoy earth and walk away when our time is done. But now we actually have a job. We were put here to contribute to life contribute to make life better so we weren't created just to consume resources this is what he's saying now we weren't created just to consume resources and he means this by saying to eat to breathe and to take up space and I 
had to put my little comment there. It's, I said, I saw this video which I shared on Facebook. And I always encourage people to follow me there because I tend to share a lot. This is my contribution to life, to help people empower their thinking. Because it's about thinking. It's what's in the mind that makes who we are. And if our mind is empty, our life is empty. So, I shared this video on Facebook and I want you to please follow me there. It's Joy Fido. Go on Facebook, type in Joy Fido and then ask to be, make a friend request and I'll accept you. I put a lot of clips that are helpful. It's just a great platform to share important messages and information. That's Facebook. And this clip that I put on was about one a Nigerian and another was an Arab. And these people were hopelessly and irritatingly, disrespectfully throwing money at another person. So this is like, us, especially us Nigerians, we call you spray someone when they are dancing. Let's say there's a celebration, and you know, a wedding, a birthday party, whatever, and you're, everybody's in a good mood. So we, we give money to the celebrants, but we have a habit of just throwing the money on the person. Okay, so gradually uh, this habit is trying to be killed slowly or I'll say culture because people feel so, you know, sometimes disgusted at how money is just flung on other people. But anyway, it's still there. And so this particular man was just throwing what and what of notes, US dollars. And it created like a pool of money everywhere. People were walking on top of it. And then this was the Nigerian clip. And then there's another clip. This was an Arab man doing similar thing to a lady who was singing. And he just carried words of notes and he was just dripping it like rain on this person. And it was endless. It didn't stop. It was just continuous until the until the clip finished. And it made me think, money is meant to be the reward for hard work. If you work hard and get the reward of money, you will treat it with respect. If it is your sweat and your blood, you will not throw it on people and walk over it. It is not used to, if it is not used to create something, money is absolutely worthless. And when somebody is just throwing money in this format, it could have been used to create employment, set up a business, housing facilities, educate young people who don't have parents, you know, orphans. Advise people, create centers where you advise people, where you support people, where you give information. Like a, a town center. You create a skill center where you encourage people to pick up skills. There's so much you can do with this money. And that's how you contribute to life. You remember we've been told here, it is our job to come and contribute to life. But now if your idea of contributing to life is just to fling money up on people, I don't see how that is contribution. So it is so, so sad that people die looking for money. People get this, you know, depressed. People become mental, people commit suicide, chasing money, desperate for money, taking on jobs that they cannot handle, that are so beneath them sometimes, but because life has to carry on, so you do all this. And then you see other people with words and words of it, have no clue what to do with it, and they're just throwing it on people. I don't see that as contributing to life. But that's the message in this cha chapter. God wants us to contribute to life. So we're back to him now. So he said, God designed us to make a difference with life. Do you see where I'm coming from? He designed us to make a difference with life. And I always relate to this comment from Genesis. God said, go ye and multiply. Go oh, yeah and multiply. Everybody or most people confuse that statement to just mean go and bear children. 
Multiply means multiply anything I have given you. That's what it is. And that's one of the reasons we're in this park today. Because when you're going to see amazing images of this park, of what human being has used to work with God, using their head to plant trees all over the place in such a beautiful format that people like me and other people around here can walk around and feel so relaxed and be at, at one with nature. That's you multiplying. That's somebody multiplying. Working with God to create more, to bring beauty out of what God has given us. But you know, unfortunately for us in Africa in particular, I, I like to refer to my continent and my country a lot. We do not get that. We don't get that at all. We have so much nature in that part of the world, but we don't understand that we are meant to go and multiply it. And that's what he's telling us. God designed us to make a difference with life. We're supposed to make a difference, not just walk into it, moan, 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 complain, complain, get sad, get depressed, leave. That's not the role he created us for. While many best-selling books offer advice on how to get the most out of life, and you're gonna hear I, I was one of them, all I wanted to do was get rich. Ways to get rich, how to get rich, get rich, get rich. We lost the message, which is contribute something to life. It is not just about money. And that, those images I gave you of these two gentlemen clearly tells you what it is. It's not about acquiring money in itself. That's the message God sent us here for. Because if I had just gone ahead and got rich by whatever means, my head would have been empty. And then when your head is empty, what happens? You don't throw money around like it means nothing. Because obviously the means by which these people got this money, I don't know. But he obviously says that they did not sweat for it. Because if they sweated for it, they would not have been thrown it away in that fashion. And so, why many best-selling books offer advice on how to get the most out of life? That's not the reason God made us. God did not make us just to go and get the most out of life. He actually made us to go and give the most to life. Go and give the most to life. We were created to add to life on earth, not just to take from it. And I remember one of the comments, or I think one of the presidents of America, maybe I can't get it right, but he says, America wants people who can add to it add to America, not people who just want to take from America. And I think that's the same thing with all of us. God wants people that can come to this earth and add to life. Not just people that will come and take from life. And you look around, you look around everyone around you. That's where all of us are most of the time. Life is unfair to me. Life hasn't given me what I want. Life has not done this. Life has not done that. We never ask ourselves, what have we given to life? God wants us to give something back to life. And that's what we just said. Don't ask America what they can give to you, but ask what you can give to America. Don't ask God what they can give to you. Tell him what you can give to you. For us Africans and Nigerians, I keep talk, talking about us. It is all about just making money for the sake of making money. Politicians in particular in Africa, this is where I always, and, and I think now I finally got to the end of it. I think I finally got what was missing in my head. They simply just want to steal and rob the people of their wealth. That's the politicians in Africa. It's about bringing an idea to life that helps make life easy for people. But these politicians have no clue. These politicians have no clue. All they want to do is just to get money and hold money. For them, it's a piece of paper and that's it. Money in my hand. They, 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 they get the foundation of a building, they fill it up with money, they put money in black bags, they walk around town with it. 
that's the joy they have. And when they go for that, they buy cars and they buy houses. And that's all they think of with money. But you get the message. The message is there is practically nothing in their head. They have no thoughts. And that's why when money has come into their hands, they cannot do anything with it. That's how simple it is. I didn't know that. I always wondered. I knew something wasn't right, but this comes from today. So for them, they cannot bring any idea to life that will help to make life easy for people. The Bible said, I've said about that one, go here and multiply. I run by most times in the morning and I look at all this creation by people multiplying what nature has given us. And it really touches my heart. Money in itself, this is a big message for you now today and me too. Money is in itself means nothing. Money can only be useful based on what it can create, based on what it can bring to life. And this is God's fourth purpose for our life. It is called ministry or service. That's what he's telling us. Ministry or service. What service can we give God? The Bible gives us the details. We were created to serve God. And that's what the title of this chapter is. We were created to serve God. The Bible says, God has created us for a life of good deeds. Do you hear that? A life of good deeds. Which he has already prepared us to do. These good deeds are our service. These good deeds are the service we have to give to life. Whenever we serve others in any way, we are actually serving God. And fulfilling one of our, our purposes. So whenever we serve other people, whenever we give something to people, some people like to call it give back, give back to society. Whenever you give something, you are actually serving God. And this book that I've taken on to share with you, that I'm giving you something. Because I know there are so many people out there who are gaining from this knowledge that I'm sharing. I am gaining from it too. But I'm giving it. The man who wrote this book sat down and wrote this book to help all of us as well. He has given something back. The minute you give something to other people, you are serving God. That's the big message here. These good deeds are our service. And whenever we serve others in any way, we are actually serving God and fulfilling one of our purposes. What God told Jeremiah is also true for us today. Before I made you in your mother's womb, this is God talking to Jeremiah. Before I made you in your mother's womb, I chose you. Before you were born, I set you apart for a special work. Can all of us take this message, please? Before you were born, he set us up for a special work. He set each and every one of us up for a special work. And this is why it bothers me when people feel, I want to compete. Who are you competing with? Remember we said we are from one body. Although we are many, we are one body. What God has put into you is not the same that he has put into me or put in the next person. And that's why when I have an idea, I don't worry about it because I know that idea is me, is unique to me. The same thing with your idea is unique to you. So when are we going to really understand this? and start working with God. Start bringing his visions to life. For special assignment. We were saved to serve God. That's the big message. We were saved to serve God. The Bible says, it is he who saved us and chose us for his holy work. Not because we deserved it, but because 
that was his plan so he saved us he chose us for his only work not because we we deserve to be that but because he chose us to do it god redeemed us so we could do his holy work that's a big message we are not saved by service but we are saved for service so our life here and and this got this got me a real serious message as well you know i was chatting with one of my friends the other day and we were just wondering because again we know so many friends who have gone and we kept saying okay so all these people we know that are gone we wonder why are we still here and this answered it for me. We are saved for service. So that tells me something. I still have something to do. I have a lot to contribute to life. And I'm happy to take on the role. I'm happy to take on this mantle that God has given me to do things for his life. Because remember, we're created for his purpose, not our purpose. And that's a big mistake we keep making as humans. We come here and all we are after is how to make money. All we want is the mansion to live in, the, 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 the private jet to drive, ride in, the first class tickets, the, the, the most amazing school to attend and have the most amazing education. I read something one time on WhatsApp. And this young man, the dad has sent him to all the best schools in the world. He acquired so much education, certificates everywhere. And now he was ill on his deathbed. And he said to people, call my dad for me. He said, dad, you sent me to all these schools to learn all these things. But you never told me, you never taught me to read the Bible. Now I'm dying. What value is all this education? Do you see where it goes? Because this is where we make mistakes. This is where our distraction comes on this earth. We forget the reason we are here, hence the book, Purpose Driven Life. The purpose for us being here is what this man is trying to get us to understand. It isn't about the money. It isn't about all that designer clothes and fancy shoes and all of that yes we get them we can feel good with them but it's not that's not the, the main purpose we have to make sure we keep contributing to life all of that can follow but don't miss out on the big mission come and contribute to life do something for your community do something for people around you It says in God's kingdom we have a place, a purpose, a role, and a function to fulfill. This gives our life great significance and value. Do you see that? When we take our role and our function to fulfill things on this earth, we get significance and value in life. It cost Jesus his own life to purchase our salvation. So Jesus came to save us. He died on the cross for us. Bible reminds us God paid a great price for us. So we should use our body to honor God. God paid, paid a very, very great price. He gave his son for us. So he says we should use our body to honor him. We don't save God out of guilt. We don't save God out of guilt out of fear, out of duty, but out of joy and deep gratitude for what he's done for us. So we should be thanking God for giving his son for us, for giving us all of this opportunity and be grateful. It shouldn't be we're thinking it's our duty. Oh, I'm so scared. It should be out of joy. We owe God our lives through salvation. 
Our past has been forgiven. Our present is given meaning. And our future is secured. So we're taking on all these roles of contributing to life. That's our future secured. In light of these incredible benefits Paul offers us, Paul concluded, because of God's great mercy, offer yourself as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service. So you see where this is coming from? Because of all these wonderful great things God has given to us, the opportunity of life itself, he says we should offer ourselves as living sacrifices. Now what does this mean? By contributing to God's life, by giving back, by being useful, by allowing all those amazing gifts that God has given us to be brought to life. That's what a living sacrifice is. Give. The Apostle John taught that our loving, sacri our loving sacrifice to others shows that we are truly saved. He said, our love for each other proves that we have gone from death to life. So when we start to give love to other people, it just goes to show that we have gone from death and now we are alive. If I have no love for others, no desire to serve others, and I'm only concerned about my needs, I should question whether Christ is really in my life. So that's a big question is asking. If you find that you have no love for other people, you have no desire to serve other people, and you're only concerned constantly about your needs, which I find we all do, it's constantly about me, 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 me. You don't want to hear about anybody's needs. Then, if I find all I think about is just me, it says I should question myself. Whether Christ is really in my life. And why is that? Because Christ gave his life for us. So why now can we not sacrifice ourselves to other people? And this sacrifice is not about going to stand on the cross and, and be like Christ. But by giving whatever little form we can give. Now if Christ can give the ultimate sacrifice which is dying for us. Why is it so hard for us to share the God-given gifts that we have with other people? A saved heart is one that wants to serve. That's what he's reminding us. A heart that's saved by God is a heart that wants to serve other people. Another term for serving God that's misunderstood by most people is the word ministry. Ministry. When most people hear ministry, they think of pastors, they think of priests, they think of a professional clergy. But God says every member of his family is a minister. So God is saying to us today, every member of us, every one of us is a minister. We can minister something unto people. In the Bible, the word servants and ministers as are synonymous as our service and ministry. If you are a Christian, you are a minister. And when you are serving, you are ministering. That's what he's reminding us. Whenever we serve people, we are ministering. When Peter's sick mother-in-law was healed by Jesus, she instantly stood up and began to serve Jesus using her new gift of health. So now that she had health, she stood up and started serving Jesus. This is what we are here to do too. We are healed to help others. So the life we have is with us so that we can help others, so that we can support others. Think of Peter's mother-in-law. She stood up and served Jesus. Now she had help. So we are here alive and kicking with our arms complete, our legs complete, health in good, in good form. Why can't we not serve? We are blessed to be a blessing. So with all the blessings we get, we are supposed to be a blessing. Like those two gentlemen with all their money throwing it all over people. 
They have all this money. They are supposed to be a blessing. They are supposed to build things, support young people, help people in the community. We are saved to serve, not to sit around and wait for heaven. Now this is a big one, especially for us Christians. We just think it's all about just sit down and wait until heaven comes. But he's here to tell us, that's not our role. We are meant to get up with our help and start doing things that will help other people. Have you ever wondered why God doesn't just immediately take us to heaven the moment we accept his grace? So now you, you say to yourself, oh yeah, I'm born again. Now I've accepted God and now I'm going to see life different. A new life, like we're doing. So now we get new understanding, new awareness. And then he says, have we wondered why, now that we are fully aware, why God doesn't just take us immediately? Why does he leave us in a fallen world? Of course we all know this world is all messed up. And that's the best way to describe it, fallen world. He leaves us here to fulfill his purpose. So that's the biggest message in this chapter. We are here to fulfill God's purpose. Not to make money and fill a bank account. This is what we all think our life purpose is about. Including myself, we thought, I thought that too. How much money could I possibly make? This was interesting. One, one time I traveled back home and um, again, life carries on. You gain more understanding. You're constantly growing because all we're doing here is growth. It's spiritual growth. And I got into that level where all I wanted to do was question what was going on with me, all the things going wrong. And I remember, because um, I've gone to rent a little place to stay in Lagos to get acclimatized to the system again and see what I can contribute to that society. And then my sister said to me, oh, look at you. You're starting all over again here. If you were here all these years, you would have been a lot bigger than this. Yeah, she's right in that sense, because obviously the stage I left Nigeria, I was way ahead. And I came over here to start life all over again. So if I was there, yes, I would not be in a tiny little flat. I'd probably be in a mansion or whatever. I don't know what it would have been. God knows best. But then I said to her, no, that wasn't my purpose on this earth, to just live in a big mansion or get so far ahead in life. I have gained so much knowledge that's invaluable, that's priceless. And all of these are some of it. And you know, one of the chapters, he reminded us clearly that every problem we go through is father filtered. God allows them to go to, to happen to us so we can grow from it, so we can be stronger. So whenever you're going through difficult times, it's not because God wants you to break down and disappear and die. It's not meant to break you. You know the saying, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I absolutely believe it. Because if I hadn't been through all the difficult times I've been through, I probably would not be looking at this kind of knowledge. I would have seen life in another form. And so that's a big message for us to take on. So, once we are saved, God intends to use us for his goals. God has a ministry for us in his church and a mission for us in this world. So the mission is bigger than what we are thinking. And that's why he takes us through different things. All of this is to grow us spiritually and make us ready for bigger roles to come. Remember in the last chapter, he was talking about how he took 80 years to grow Moses and so many other men of God. That's how he does his job. He wants us to be strong, to take on big roles in life. 
So it says we are called to serve God. Growing up, we may have thought that being called by God was something only missionaries or pastors or nuns and other full-time church workers experienced. So whenever you hear, oh, that person got a calling. I know I hear that all the time, especially with pastors. And they say that one's got a church. They go, oh, when did he receive the calling? It says, growing up, we may have thought that being called by God was something only missionaries, pastors, nuns, and other full-time church workers experience. But the Bible says every Christian is called to serve. 